Well, it's back to school for coastal and inland schools tomorrow and the decision to do this breaking with coastal schooling usually starting a week later than inland schools was due to public holidays and the upcoming elections school authorities say. This way the uh, 2024 calendar will comprise 203 school days and 26 for public holidays during the academic period. But the big issue stem from school readiness and whether the country's millions uh, of schoolgoers will find placement in a good classroom that's properly staffed and well equipped, as well as this hot issue around placement. So let's hear from two provinces now, Gauteng and Mpumalanga. Hopefully we get the Mpumalanga guest on soon, but for now we welcome to the program the Gauteng Education MEC Matume Chilwane. Good evening to you MEC and thank you very much. I know it's a busy night tonight because um, it's a big day tomorrow for a lot of our learners going back to school. Let's start with the placement issue and we've shared some video there of interviews with parents who still haven't been able to place their kids and the sense we get is that the system itself doesn't seem to be as flexible particularly in cases where a child might have been applied for in a certain area, parent is changing or relocating, it's hard to get that child off that area and then for them to reapply. Just talk us through what parents can do in scenarios like these. Thank you. Good evening to you and your viewers. Um, <clears throat> no, the system is not as rigid as... Uh, uh, because remember, what happens is that if your child is placed, uh, and then the system registered it as placed. But if you want to remove the child from that school to another school, then it would withdraw the child entirely. But it does not mean they'll go to the school that you prefer, because that school might be full itself. So you can only find your child's space in schools that have spaces. But if those that have full are full school, already full, unfortunately, there's really not much we can do because at the same time we don't want to get our schools to be over extremely overcrowded uh, up until we create enough classroom space in those schools in that particular area <laughs> in, in that particular example though uh, mec where you want to change gears or apply somewhere else um what what recourse does a parent have in that scenario where they've no, the relocated for work and and their child is already on the system what can they do no, already th those parents, they know, they've gone to the schools and then they've gone to the district. They, they've gone to the right places to get intervention in that regard. So they must just uh, give the districts and the schools an opportunity to really find space for their learner and be placed. What we can assure parents now is that we will find spaces for those particular learner, parents who are in that situation, spaces for their kids. That's what we'll, we'll do. Uh, because it's only not only because it's a constitutional obligation rather that we we should place our our the learners of school going age so we will place them what we cannot guarantee and what i will not guarantee here is that we'll get them at the school that they would have preferred yeah because yeah. currently we're dealing with schools that are full right and and that seems to be the pervading sentiment is that parents you know who can't get their first uh, placement choice and we've seen some cases um, where the second choice is sometimes very very far away from the original choice what can be done uh, MEC to ensure that even if they can't and, and it stands to reason capacities you know breached or maximized so they have to be re reallocated what can be done to really work with parents on not having their children placed you know in excess of 20 kilometers away from the initial school of choice one of our viewers was you know suggesting something like a directorate of uh, placement um, you know for learners I don't know if the department is considering something like that a dedicated unit that just focuses on dealing with some of these nuances around learner placement no we have a directorate that, that deals with admissions um, so that one we have in place and that's why we're able to deal with such huge numbers and and majority of it we're able to ensure that they are satisfied but with regard to the distance, I, we don't place learners 20 kilometers away from the initial school. What we do is that we look at your application, the schools that you have applied to, if those schools are full, we seek, we find you a school, that we, tra we transfer you to a school closest to the schools that you've applied for. That's what we do. So we, we, we are not irrational when we take a child from the uh, Tembisa and then we place them in Soweto. Right. Or in civil okay. We don't do that. We look at the closest school that we find. And what and furthermore, what we do in such an instance, we also start 
a process of uh, ensuring that we provide scholar transport. So we began that process of provisioning as to what will be the needs. There's a community, there's not a school here. These are the numbers of learners available. Then you provide scholar transport. All right, so, I'd, uh, I'd love Thank you, MEC. I'd love for our viewers to weigh in on what you've said, that it's not unreasonable and you're not placing kids, you know, in excess of 20 kilometres away and you're laying on transport. We work with one of our colleagues here who described this exact case and perhaps we can connect those details with the office to see if they can help, um, help in, a, in a real situation where the parents now almost have to do an about turn from where they're working. They don't have the means for private or scholar transport and now they're sitting in this conundrum. Let's broaden the picture now and go to Mpumalanga as well and we're joined by uh, Chikudu Manyabiane who is the Chief Director for District Coordination in the province. Share with us, uh, Chikudu, good evening and welcome to the program. What's the picture like in Mpumalanga in terms of availability of classrooms um, and placements for learners. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm not Chukuru. I'm uh, Lucy Moyani, the head of department. Uh, but in terms of our placement, indeed, we do have learners that have not been placed uh, at the moment, particularly in our fast growing towns. Uh, the fast growing towns will be something like in Bombela. White River, uh, Emelo, and uh, Secunda, Middlebeck, and Emelasene. Those are the areas where we're finding that there are learners that are not placed yet. However, we do have a plan to place these learners by the end of the week. And also our late applications, uh, we will be able to place them by the end of the week. We are establishing satellite uh, schools linked to the existing schools. For instance, in White River, we are building about uh, five mobile classrooms for the secondary schools and three mobile classrooms for the primary schools so that we can accommodate uh, the numbers that could not be uh, placed. I'm also happy to indicate that from today, uh, in Bombela, Liefeld, uh, Lyre School, School Liefeld, five classes of the 13 that we were building are ready to be utilized. So that space has been increased in those particular areas. Ms. Moyani, we, how we, many we kids, providing... so sorry to interject, how many children are we talking about tonight without placement that you're hoping to place by weekend, but by the week's end? In uh, our Busabela district, we have 131 grade one learners and 210 grade eight. In Ethanzeni, Mbombela in particular, we have 205 grade one with 61 grade eight learners. And uh, in White River, we have 102 grade one and 142 grade eight. Third we have a biggest number, but we have redirected learners to schools that have uh, spaces. For instance, we had 771 grade one learners that could not be placed, but we have redirected them to schools that have uh, spaces. And in Kangala also, we had about 355 grade one learners that could not be placed and these learners have been redirected to schools that have uh, places however i must indicate that that the parents sometimes do not accept the places that have been offered to them because in kangala with all the learners being redirected redirected we are only having 18 learners that we could not place well, it sounds, uh, Ms. Moyani, that, you know, leaving this to the 11th hour, effectively, schools open tomorrow, that this is going to be a chaotic process. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, kids would, th there would be late notice given to their parents about arrangements for their transportation and their placement because they wouldn't have had prior, prior warning or knowledge of where their children were going to be placed. And as you say, out of some of the expectations for the delivery of classrooms, not all of those have been delivered. So th there might be an issue there now. How could the situation could how could the situation have been mitigated? It speaks to planning, preparation, expectation for the 2024 academic year. You, you are correct. It speaks to planning. As a department, we started our process of admission in May last year already, but we do have parents that apply uh, very late in the system, and there are others. There are parents that are still applying even in this week. 
and we still have to find places for those uh, for, for those uh, uh, learners. We we closed the registration on the 31st of August um, last year, and we have been moving and placing uh, learners since then. We communicate with our stakeholders, we communicate with our SDBs. Just last week, we had meetings with our SDBs in uh, Bosabela and also in Ethanzen to deal with this particular uh, matter. So our belief is that tomorrow will be a smooth transfer because we know that um, we have informed parents uh, accordingly. Yes, there are parents that will still be raising con concerns, but it's not the majority of, of, of parents. And we believe that this challenge will be less than what we experienced in 2023. MEC, let's bring it back to um, Gauteng. Just in terms of, of readiness, how would you say overall um, the preparation process has been and by when will those pupils who are still yet without a, out of space at school be placed? In terms of prepare, prepare, what, preparedness for the new academic year, no, we, we've got our eye on the bouncing ball. Uh, we are ready with, uh, all our schools rather are ready for the new academic year. We don't foresee any challenges at all uh, because we started preparations quite a while ago uh, and by before end of November we, had, we were already ready for the new academic year. And that's a bit knowing that there, there will be uh, a growth in our system uh, because it's been happening consistently, that meant that we would prepare. So with regard to those that are currently, um, uh, we've opened up our online now application. So what, what that means is that uh, there are schools that are open on the system and parents are only allowed to apply for those schools. All the schools that are full, they will not be found on the system. So those are the spaces that we have available mm. right now for, for our parents. Uh, and for those that we are dealing with, especially those who, who are, might not have been happy with their transfer, it's a process that we are dealing with, but we have offered space to every single one of uh, those that have applied uh, uh, during the, yeah. the, first, the first process, uh, the 276,000 for uh, combined both grade one and grade eight. Spaces but, have been offered, mm. so what those particular modalities of discontentment, distance, if there is, and other, and others. But one of the biggest gripes uh, that comes up often, uh, MEC and uh, perhaps HOD to you as well, is whether all schools are created equal. I mean, do all of these schools offer, you know, complementary facilities, well-staffed, um, you know, institutions, enough space, non-crowded facilities? How would you say they fare stacked side by side, uh, MEC Chilwane, which in part is giving rise to the dissatisfaction by some, uh, you know, some parents who believe their child might be going to what, what they would see as an inferior school? Yeah, look, it's, it's, I, I will not uh, look at it from infrastructure ones because some of the schools that parents are rejecting are former Model C schools. Uh, and that's largely uh, what, what is largely because, for us, maybe for instance, the leadership of the school, how the school has been run, uh, the general discipline of the learners. Those are some of the things that parents look at before they make a decision on the schools. So it's got nothing to do with the historical disparity of it being in the township or it being in the suburban area. The most in-demand school in our province was a school in the township in Katleo. Uh, so, so that shows that it's not necessarily the historical uh, uh, advantages and disadvantages that determine the preference of school, but the performance of the school. And that's what parents look at. You want to take your child to a school that is, is good in terms of discipline, there's the performance in the metric pass rate, there's performance in general school, sports, et cetera, cultural activities, extra. So that's what parents look at overall. Uh, and, and some schools, majority of our schools, fortunately, uh, okay. parents have accepted it. They're just two of those schools. And what we're saying to parents that those schools, we've got a plan around them. Uh, we've got an extensive uh, strategy that we've put in place to ensure that we turn around those schools. And right. most of them, we've turned them around. There are still a few that we're still to turn around. All right, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you both uh, for coming on tonight. Appreciate that. I'm sure our parents in both these provinces would be watching with great interest. Gauteng Education, MEC, Matume Chilwane, and HOD of Education in Mpumalanga, Lucy Moyani. Thank you so much.